Without Remorse Podcast with Joe and Dave. Be warned, the discussions in this podcast will contain detailed spoilers. For spoiler-free reviews of newly released films, please check out our channel, Reviews Without Remorse, on YouTube and Vidme. Enter at your own risk and enjoy the show. And welcome back to another episode of Reviews Without Remorse. I am, as always, your good buddy Joe, and here is my partner in crime, Dave. What's going on, buddy? Why are you, as always, why are you, as always? I don't know. I gotta change it up a little bit. I'll, I'll, I'll write myself some intros. Yeah, you, you need. You're awesome. You need to be like, and it's me, Awesome Joe, and his buddy Dave. Or, and, <laughs> hey, it's like you know, Super Superman Joe and Batman Dave, or something like that. I mean, come on. I can, I can call you my youthful ward. No, you, <laughs> you you will not be calling me your youthful ward. On this episode, we will discuss the new Dunkirk trailer, just came out this week. Also, the new Defenders trailer, which I think looks pretty cool. And we will discuss Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Volume 2. A lot of D's this week, and then we go to G. The call went out. We have to go to Dunkirk. Ready on the stern line. What are you doing? You know where we're going. Into war, George. I'll be useful, sir. One of ours. Dunkirk looks pretty cool. I don't really have a lot to say other than that. Um, yeah, I, I got, I got to, I got to kind of agree with you there. It's like a part of me. I know it's a Nolan flick, and I get the feeling like <laughs> the thing about Nolan flicks when he's not doing Batman. It's like the marketing department at Warner Brothers has no fucking idea how the hell to market these movies. It's like, Jesus Christ, it's a movie about a guy who goes inside of a dream, who goes inside of a dream. What the fuck? How do we market that shit? And how do we... Dun, 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 dun. Exactly. And, and you just know that, like, Nolan has enough clout with Warner Brothers that he's like, you are not fucking spoiling a goddamn thing. You can't use this scene. You can't use this scene. No. Mm. You, you just know he's got that type of clout. And it's the same with Interstellar. So, you know, how the hell do you get... The, do, you, do you market that and make it like somewhat exciting? Yeah. At the story of Dunkirk alone, I almost feel like, you know, just knowing what little context about Dunkirk that I know, it's like you can just say, I'm doing a movie. You just have Christopher Nolan introduce the trailer saying, Hi, I'm doing a movie about the Battle of Dunkirk. Look it up. See you in July. <laughs> and, and that, and that, could, and, to, and to me, I'm like, Okay, I'm ready. I mean, the story itself is great. But in the context, it felt like a lot of mishmashed scenes, you know, to try to get across this feeling of desperation and everything like that. And everything was out of context, and it's hard really to say. Uh, a little mm. bit of spoilery as well. I, I kind of feel like that scene with the um, with the, the medical boat sinking is kind of a huge spoiler. But I don't know. How, how, do you, how do you not... I mean, part of the story is the fact that these soldiers were basically kind of sort of rescued by civilian craft. And right, how, do, right. how, do, how do you get across that to an audience that has no idea what the fuck Dunkirk is? I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm going to see it. I am excited by it, but I kind of feel like the trailers right now are just kind of empty. And I get the feeling like it's going to be a retroactive thing. Like, when we actually see the movie, the trailer is going to like look so much better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say it's probably true. I mean, I mean, again, like I said, I can't think of a bad Nolan film, frankly. I, there's some I like better than others, mm -hmm. but he ranges from solid B plus to A pluses. I can't see this being anything less than stellar, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, I think it's gonna be good. You know, it's funny about spoilers because I feel like you, you never really know what's a spoiler until you see the film. True. Um, Very true. Some are kind of obvious, I suppose, but uh, for the most part, I think like. If they're spoiling things that are early in the film as opposed to later in the film, like you don't know what the big, you know, twists and turns are going to be. Yeah, very true, very true. I just, I, I don't know. I just, I, I I'm going to see it simply because of the name Nolan. But I kind of feel like yeah. my, my my thing right now is is like think think of it this way: if we didn't know the director, if this was like an unproven director, would we still be interested? And I'm got to be honest: if I'm looking at it from that context, I feel like no. I I I feel like this is like like. An art house wannabe flick. It's I. It's only getting a pass for me, at least, because no one's name is is attached to it. I well, I don't. I don't know if I agree with that. You know, I mean, put it this way: if you like war movies or you don't, that's a thing. 
Mm. Would you see this if, you know, if it, if it was just a war movie? Well, that depends on your taste. But, you know, I mean, having, you know, that we got great war movies over the years and some are just phenomenal. I thought the very first trailer I saw, which was the shot of the guys in the boat and you hear the airplane coming in. Yeah, that was a fucking just... That oh, got my attention. I mean, I thought that was... I really liked that little shot. And again, I didn't even know who that was when I first saw it. I, I think I was seeing something else and I saw that trailer. I didn't realize that was Nolan. I didn't realize it was Dunkirk. I liked how that was done. I liked the... Because you heard the plane and it was like one guy would turn around first. And you just saw his face. Right. You know what I mean? And then the rest of the guys, little by little, started to turn around and look. And before you know it, they're all... They're all I talking. thought that was really well done. Yeah. So... Even not knowing who it was, it, it got my attention and made me notice it. So I, 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 I'll, you know, I think it was all right. Okay, believe me, this is not me bagging on it. I'm just, you sure. know, I, I just, I'm going to see it. I, I just feel like they're very general. Um, they give an idea of what it's about. I, you know, and uh, maybe I'm just complaining for complaining. I'm old. Get off my lawn. You have interrupted a citywide investigation. You stole evidence from my crime scene. And you got my one lead killed. I was trying to help him, but you didn't. Jessica Jones, stop talking. Who the hell are you? My name is Matthew Murdoch. I'm your attorney. Defenders. Now we're getting interesting. (laughs) Okay. I thought it was a very solid trailer. We've discussed this. I'm not a big fan of non-contextual use of a song. Ever since, like, you know, we saw... We, we discussed this with um, the the movie that we won't mention with uh, Come Together. Uh, we discussed this with Thor, with uh, the Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin. And now we've got Come As You Are. Right, right. By, by, by Nirvana. Now, mm-hmm. I, I don't know what it is, but, like, I the when I... That started happening. My first thought was Suicide Squad, um, Bohemian Rhapsody, um, and Justice League come together. It was the first thing I thought of. It's like, why? Why? Why do we have to go there? I mean, yeah. it's getting overused. It, it, it's getting overused. But you know, I will say, in the defense of the defenders, well, again, well, well, not intended. I, I, you know, the way they use this one. They slowed the song down enough to make me listen to every lyric, mm. and it made me ask. What is this lyric telling me? So, right. assuming that there's a connection with the lyric and, and what's actually happening, then props. But, you know what I mean? I, I, it's not just, like, insert rock song here. That is very um, true. You know what I mean? And again, like, you're right. I, I, I bashed the shit out of it when um, Justice League did it because I, I thought it was just a terrible throw-in. You know, look, we ain't, we ain't your granddaddy super friends. You know, we're cool and hardcore. You know, and Thor did it better, yeah. And here, again, I... I, if the context is 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 right, then I I'm with it. You know, I mean, again, I don't, I'm not a, I'm not anti using music in trailers. You know, I mean, well, it, neither it's, am it's, I. I just I find it to yeah. become it's becoming like a trope almost. It, it's getting to where like, all right, who's not doing this now? Yeah, I, I agree with you. So and, and it's and, and I and I'm watching myself. Am, am I bagging on it over here and giving it a pass over here? I don't know. I, I don't think so. Again, it was the context is sort of different in this one because again they they made you sort of stop and hear every lyric and I thought that was interesting. Right. Um, but you know, aside from that, I don't know the the, the background of the. I'll, I'll leave this to you. I don't know the background of the defenders in the comics. Now, I did, now, did this group get together in the comics? I know that Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Yeah. Were were they were definitely a, a team up for a long time that had their own book. Uh, I don't know about the other yes. ones. Uh, the, the original Defenders was, um, uh, God, Doctor Strange, the Hulk, Namor, and the Silver Surfer. Mm. That was the original Defenders. That's right. That rings, uh, that rings a bell. Go ahead. Okay. So, so yeah, in, in the context, I mean, from, so we can't really rely on the comic books at this point to, to, to talk about the Defenders. They've just, they've utilized the name. That's, that's really all that's happening. They've utilized yeah. the name. Okay. But, you know, the, the context of the Defenders always was, was, you know, hey, we're just, you know, we're a non-team, we're the outsiders, we're just, you know, going to do, do you know, get together every once in a while for when shit uh, gets bad. So, in that context, yeah, the original team-up was always Power Man and Iron Fist, which is Luke Cage and um, Iron Fist. Um, it was actually uh, within, 
goodness, I'd say back in 2000, actually, there was a comic book, excuse me, there was a comic book called Alias, and Alias was the first introduction to the character Jessica Jones, and the idea was, was that she was a former superhero who was very, extremely briefly in the Avengers, until Mm -hmm. Kilgrave came along, and she was like, fuck that, and she got messed up because of that whole situation, she got out of it and just went to Hell's Kitchen and did her her thing. And this is kind of a quote-unquote reintroduction of the character and how she intertwines with the lives of people in there. And there was a lot of action, uh, of, of interaction between her, uh, Matt, and um, Matt Murdock, D- Daredevil, and, and Luke Cage. In fact, in the comic books, her and Luke Cage are married and have a kid. I think that was where they got the, 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 the where they got the idea to just bring this all together. It's like, okay, we've got all these characters; they have interacted in the past. You know, we should form like a mini Avengers. Let's just make them the Defenders. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, however, from the comic book series series Alias and a couple of the other series that they they do have uh, Power, uh, Power Man and Iron Fist back again uh, as a comic book. This is kind of sort of reminiscent of this new wave that they're that they're doing. They just don't call themselves the Defenders in the comic book. They just kind of sort of team up every once in a while. Mm-hmm. I, I so I have to kind of remove the comic element. I have to kind of say to myself, okay, you got to look at this not as the comic books. You have to look at it as what has been established by each of these characters' individual shows because that's right, what right. they're relying on. Agreed. And in the context of that, it's looking really freaking amazing. All right, you take out the use of the song, which you know, and that's that's kind of in case people haven't realized it yet. My thing with with talking about anything is that I want to start with the bad shit. I always want to start with the ba- <laughs> the bad shit because I kind of feel like if we get the bad shit out of the way, then we can kind of end on a more positive note before we come to our numbered uh, conclusion. So this way, it doesn't seem like I'm just like you know bagging on the whole thing. So in the con- in, te- in the context of the series. You know, it's great seeing all of them to get together. The minute Matt says Jessica Jones, don't say another word. I was I was on board, but that was because a little bit of my comic book background with it. But but everything else about it, I mean, they just I get the feeling that when they cast each of the subsequent characters, they kind of had the actors from before meet because if you want them to work, they kind of have to interact pretty well. And it seems like their interactions between the four of them work. Uh, I mean, when, when Iron Fist met Luke Cage and I saw the two of them together for the first time, I was kind of like, ah, oh, look at that. That kind of works. I'm, yeah, okay, yeah. I, I'm on board with that. We don't really know a lot. I mean, obviously, you know, keeping with the Marvel TV tradition of there must be a hallway fight scene, it seems there's going to be a, a four-way yeah. hallway fight scene, which is looking pretty good so far. I almost wonder now, should they give that a break? Because it, it is getting to be a little... T- it. it- it's getting tropey. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like the first couple of times, it's it, it, I like it, you know. And I, I kind of, of all the things to sort of have a habit of doing or whatever, that's not bad for sure. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and like it's kind of cool that they sort of like you know, oh the hall, you know they they do hallway fights really well, and there's one coming up in this or whatever. But yeah, I, I, I kind of feel like at this point, may, maybe now it's time to stop with that. I'm kind of hoping that now that they they they, they have the big hallway fight between. The, with the four of them, I hope that that's like that's the capper. That's that's like that's yeah. it. We can't do any better than this. You know, anything else will just seem like a cheap rip off, and like we're trying to recapture the magic. I really, really hope that that's the capper, and that's it. And yeah. you know, it's like no, we have to have a hallway fight. Each person has to have their hallway fight, and each person got their hallway fight. And now there's the big hallway fight, and hopefully that's it. I hope you're right. Yeah, I'll go with that. I mean, I kind of, I, I almost didn't like when I saw this in the trailer. I kind of thought it was kind of like one person came up and punched somebody, then the next guy ran up and punched somebody, and then the, ran, the other guy ran up and punched somebody. I was like, yeah, this it might be a little too difficult to try to come up with the hallway fight where everybody gets a turn, and yeah, I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll, the jury's out, and you know we'll see how, it, how they do it. Yeah, de- definitely have to be, uh, see in context. What I'm curious about is, i, I got to be honest with you, I have no idea who the fuck Sigourney Weaver is playing. Obviously, she's the bad guy. That yeah. much I, I know, but I have no idea who she is. But yes, August, uh, I believe it was August 12th. August 12th, it uh, can't come soon enough. And actually, I'm, my big hope is that, this is going to sound really, really weird, but <laughs> I think one of the, I, I, I'm looking forward to the Defenders, but I know that when we get the Defenders, we're also going to get a Punisher uh, trailer, and I'm kind of looking forward to that almost as much. Oh, totally, dude, if, if not... <laughs> 
I seriously, I, I'm wondering one Punisher with against four other guys. I yeah, I think the Punisher trailer might be even better. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I might be looking forward to that one even more. I kind of bit. I kind of gotta be honest with you. I kind of am also looking forward to a Punisher uh, season one more than the Defenders. Yeah, and and that's probably because of Iron Fist. Oh really? You think I, so? Yeah, I mean, as I, I, enjoy, I again, like I said when I reviewed it, I enjoyed Iron Fist. It is the weakest of all of the Marvel series, and but but literally, like Iron Fist became like Iron Man two. Where it was like, okay, we've got all these pieces. Iron Fist is going to kind of bring them all into place for the Defenders. Uh-huh. So that was a kind of a thankless job with, with Iron Fist. But because of that, it kind of deflated a little bit my excitement. Yeah, well, on the other hand, of all, all of the characters and all of the shows, mm-hmm. Iron Fist is the one where it's got no place to go but up. Which I is mean, true. That was, that was the one that was kind of disappointing, and I feel like... This is their chance to redeem themselves, and I'm I'm hoping. I almost got the feeling that th- that they rushed the Iron Fist to get this all to the Defenders stage, so maybe now is his chance to really shine. I don't know where I saw it too, but there was some photo I saw on the internet where they showed. I don't know if he was supposed to be a callback to like an older version of Iron Fist, but he actually had the mask, mm-hmm. the the actual kind of you know mask that goes over the top part of his face, right, right. the eyes, yeah. Um, I was when I saw that I got kind of hopeful. I said, you know, I would, I'd love to see that mask. Hmm. You know, I w- I'd like to, I, you know, I kind of feel like again, they're so trepidatious about doing actual costumes. Of all of them, the only one who has an actual costume is Daredevil, and yeah, they but, seem but really he's... reluctant to do it with the rest of them. And I'd, I'd really like to see Iron Fist in something resembling. And I, again, he's a martial artist. He can wear something that is like a martial arts uniform. And it it should, you know, I, I, like I, it's something that is from you know a different culture or a different. Whatever. He should be able to get away with a costume. I agree. Luke Cage, not as not as much. He he would be a struggle. I, I admit that. Give him a yellow T shirt, and we're probably okay. And, and Jessica give Jones just doesn't seem like the costume type. Well, they they actually hit her costume like very briefly in the show. Mm-hmm. Her, her her friend Pam showed off the costume that she wore in the comic. But yeah. in the context of where her character is, when we when we are actually introduced to her, right. it makes no sense for her to have a costume. Uh, agreed. Yeah, I mean, and, I can, yeah, and, and and the reference is nice too. Yeah, yeah. I, but I, I, again, Iron Fist. Let's let's get him into a costume. I like I'd like to see two of the four guys in in, in something resembling a costume. Right. That's what, he needs the protection. I mean, she's she's not going to get hurt very easily. Luke Cage is not going to get hurt very easily. The reason Matt wears it is because the fucker gets shot and stabbed every five minutes. Right. I agree. <laughs> I hope. So. I mean, the stuff we got. I like the. I like the return of Electra. You know, some people didn't like Electra in in season two. I thought she was great. I thought she was very very interesting. As as a translation of the character from a comic, I can understand that she's vastly different than the character in the comic. I think in the context of the universe that they built, she worked. She had a billion times more chemistry with Matt than frickin' Karen did. Okay. And, and yes. And the actress who played her, you know, she's she's a practicing martial artist. So when she moved, she fucking moved. Right. And not to, I mean, not to mention, she was absolutely stunning to look at. I mean, Which, I, 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 yeah, all the all the right things for an electric character. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. I, 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 in fact, again, you, when you mentioned what's her face, I had the same feeling. Like every time they would cut back to her, it was like. Matt Murdock didn't want to deal, you know, and I, I, frankly, there was one of the things about that that I didn't really understand exactly why he was just so offended by the. I mean, I get that he's not a murderer and she's willing to cross that line. Right. I got that, but I kind of felt like again, you know, he was just so put off. I mean, it was almost like she, you know, cheated on him with his best pal. You know, like he, he just, he really was not gonna, gonna give her the time of day. All of a sudden, I'm like, you, you could have. Talked to her out of that. They, or, I mean, I don't know. I, I didn't quite get that. But then every time they cut back to him and, and the blonde girl, it was like the, the, just like that deflation kicked in. Like everything just yeah. kind of the, the wind just got taken out of everything. And I was like, oh, it's oh, he's he's here with her again. All right, fine, whatever. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. I, it, I, it's I really not thought like, the, yeah. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I just I just thought the Elector and him were so good together, and mm. I would have liked to kept kept on with that. 
that that reluctancy on his part to, and keep going back to the other one. Yeah, well, all right, fine. I don't blame the actress who plays Karen. I blame the writers because they have. There are moments where uh, the actor uh, Chris Cox and Karen. There are moments when they're together where there's like a palpable electricity of a, of attraction between the two of them. You can you can get that sense, but. Mm-hmm. Then they start talking to each other, and it's like these two are so fucking mismatched. It 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 makes no sense whatsoever. So they can they have the physical aspect of it down, but they but the character just doesn't work as far as I'm concerned. Now you bring along Electra, who again Chris Cox and the and the actress who plays Electra, they've got some good physical chemistry, but they sure. also have great contextual and personality chemistry. That's what yeah. makes them work. It, you know, it's it's funny. You know, when I was reviewing, um, when I reviewed Spectre, hmm. and we talked about uh, Christoph Waltz playing Blofeld, I I made the argument that Christoph Waltz was really miscast as Blofeld, and we had this sort of back and forth about, well, it's not Christoph Waltz's fault. There's nothing there. Hmm. I kind of feel like you know when you're casting, you have to really. If the if the material can't do it, then you need an actor who will do it. Like an Anthony Hopkins could have taken that role and made it energetic. Christoph Waltz to me is a guy who, in the Tarantino films, you know specifically in Inglorious Bastards, he's a guy that you he's menacing because he's so nice and soft spoken that there's a menace behind him, and you know because he's in a Tarantino film that he's probably capable of some pretty horrible things. Mm -hmm. But when you take an actor like that and you put him in a Bond film where you know you're not going to get anything really over the top, nobody's going to cut off anybody's ear anytime soon. Um, (laughs) Which is a shame. Right. (laughs) But I don't know that a Christoph Waltz works in that context. Suddenly now he's just the soft-spoken guy who really doesn't have a lot behind him. Um, So yeah, I can understand what you're saying with a character like Karen... there's there's not a lot of there's not a lot for her to do. She's there to be the soft spoken mousy, you know, who kind of you know digs down and, and and you know, ooh, I'm gonna get these bad guys and I'm gonna do things I wouldn't normally do. Mm-hmm. But in the at the end of the day, it's like, all right, you, you run along and do your little your little stuff. <laughs> Excuse it's, me, I gotta it's, it's, I gotta suit up and get stabbed. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I mean, she's really it, to, to compare her to Electra is not even fair. I mean, it, like character wise, vastly different. Mm. Um, I mean, they're essentially yin and yang, really. They're almost two opposite ends of the spectrum on which, purpose. Which is fine. That's how it was supposed to be in, in the comic book. Yeah. But it's still, sure. it's still, you know. And I understand exactly what you're saying. But there are there are sometimes things outside of an actor's control. You can't control the way a scene is going to be edited. Only the right. way that you play it. Sure. You don't know which. It's like, I, I've seen it before, where they'll be like, you know, okay, could you play this angry? Rah, 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 rah. Could you play this pensive? Blah, 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 right. blah, blah. And then, you know, then you wind, <laughs> yeah. up, you wind up seeing it, and it's like, well, they combined the anger and the pensive in an editing uh, choice that makes no fucking sense to what he was trying to get across. Agreed, agreed. And, and, and I think, I don't know, I, I, it's like... Like I said, I, I, I feel like there's there's definitely there's definitely physical chemistry between between him and both the girls. Then again, Charlie Cox is a fucking good looking guy. I mean, come on. It's just like it's I'm sure, sure yeah. I'm sure any woman would go for the man, even though he's kind of short. But that's another story. Um <laughs> He looks like he came out of a JC Penny catalog. He's he's got it in the looks department, he's fine. Absolutely. You know, good good on you. Good on you. <laughs> but um I just I, I, I I, I'm, I'm very excited by the defenders. Getting back to that, we 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 really ripped the fuck off the reservation there, didn't we? Yeah, we went a little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I am looking forward to it. Um, it was nice to see Misty. Uh, I was glad to see her. I was glad to see Connie. I know that Karen also is going to show up. I know Foggy's going to show up. Basically, if they've been in one of the shows, chances are they're going to show up. Yeah. So, and uh, I'm I'm going to call it right now. I'm calling it. Right here, right now. I probably said it before, and I'm going to say it again. Claire is the Defenders Coulson. Uh, yeah, I, I I'd agree with that. Yep. I, so, I think she's she's yeah. And it's yeah, I like that that aspect. So she's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I see where you're headed now with that. Yeah. All yeah. Right. She she's going to die. I, I'm yeah. I I'm not happy about it because I like the actress and I think that her little thread through the different shows has been a nice little addition yeah. but yeah no she's she's a dead woman the 
fate of the universe lies on your shoulders. Now, whatever you do, don't push this button. Because that will set off the bomb immediately, and we'll all be dead. Now, repeat back what I just said. I agree. No! No, that's the button that will kill everyone. Try again. I am Groot. Mm-hmm. I am Groot. Uh-huh. I am Groot. No! Uh, but we go from Defenders to Guardians. It's still within the Marvel Universe. Yes! Sylvester Stallone returns to the Marvel Universe, kind of, sort of. And he was fucking awesome. And by the way, Judge Dredd was not in the Marvel Universe, so don't even make that context. Well, it's a Marvel... It's a Marvel comic book. <laughs> Judge Dredd is not a Marvel comic book. Judge Dredd is a completely different company. It's not Marvel. Oh, is that right? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I yes. stand correct. I did not know but, that. But yes, his return to comic books, uh, you could say, and he was fucking awesome. Yeah, I thought so, too. Yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. You know, again, I, I'll I'll say this. I You know, the first one, I liked it. I saw it. I enjoyed it. Um, and I kind of quickly forgot about it. Mm. Um, I, I thought it was just good, entertaining fluff, and I, I there was nothing in it that I didn't like. I just, but I, I just, I kind of quickly forgot about it. Right. And then, as the second one was coming up again, I was like, you know what? Let me. All right, it's coming up. Let me go see the first one again. Um, and I know a lot of people really liked it, so I was like, maybe I'm not seeing what other people are seeing. I watched it again, and I really, really started to like it even more. Mm. And I tell you what, when I saw Volume Two. Damn, that was a good movie. That was a, a good, good, solid film. And I was like, I t- again, I, 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 I'm, here I am sucking on Marvel again, but Jesus, these guys <laughs> can do no wrong. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it, uh, well, I mean, I'll let, you, I'll let you take the reins for a little bit, but honestly, my first impression is just, holy shit, this is a really good, solid film. And again, c- characters that you, you know... It, 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 I like how... Well, actually, I want to say this, too. And then, like I said, then I'll hand it off to you and you run with it a little bit. Okay. <laughs> it's so funny how, of all the Marvel... Again, we, we got our Captain America and our Thor and our Iron Man and our Hulk and our Spider-Man. You know, when you say Marvel Comics, that's what people think of. Right. But what I love about this one, this is like... the Guardians is like their pinch hitter where they can bring in other elements of the Marvel Universe that a lot of people might not even know about, but, you know, comic readers do. And if you asked me how to bring some of these elements in, I would, I, I couldn't tell you. I wouldn't know how to do it. Guardians can do it. Guardians is like that other guy who's able to, to bring in other elements of Marvel that you're just like, man, I never would have thought I would have seen that day where that character or this one is showing up. And he, I mean, how awesome is that? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I just, again, hats off to, to Guardians too. Uh, James Gunn, this is the man that gave us Slither for God's sakes, and he's <laughs> he's running basically the the he, he's running basically the quirky cosmic universe of Marvel. He's like yeah. perfect for that particular type of genre because I, to me, as a um, Marvel Comics fan, the cosmic side of things was never my favorite part. I always found it just to get a little too weird and everything like that. I like the groundedness the of the regular Spider-Mans Marvel Spider-Mans and the Daredevils. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that much yeah. I did. So, you know, I went into the first Guardians with very little context. I did know that, I did a little bit of research, and the, the, the team that they chose for the Guardians actually wasn't the original Guardians, although you got to see in this movie the original Guardians. The original Guardians was Yondu... Stacker uh, Accord, Martin X Tignaga, Charlie 27, Aleda Accord, and Mainframe. Uh, Kruger and Mainframe. And you got to see them the, the, during the closing credits where Sylvester Stallone says, Hey guys, let's go. And you see freaking Bing Rames there and Michelle Yo Yo and everything like that. That's the original Guardians. Right, right. From the comic book from 1969, which right. was a really awesome callback. Let me start with like the stuff that didn't work for me. And as always, folks, spoilers. Like I said, I like to start with the bad, and I'm going to get into the good. The first one... Um, the first, My first one is Nebula. Nothing against the actress. Uh, nothing against the character. My problem is this. Nebula in the first movie is like, kill 
uh, Gamora, kill Gamora, kill Gamora. All of a sudden, in this movie, it's like, no, not kill, I just want to beat you. I kind of felt like that was a bit of a step back from the character. I understand why they're doing it and why it's going to, you know, how it's and what it's going to do with regards to Infinity War because of the comic and everything like that. But it was just too sudden a shift for me for her to be that way. Okay, I, I, I see where you're coming from there. Yeah, that, that, that was that just that's just me. It's, it's a small thing, but I don't think I, I feel like. I feel like there was more to the. I mean, and I, and I like the backstory. I like the idea of the backstory that every time she lost, Thanos would kind of take a piece of her as punishment and, and as a means of improving her. I, yeah. I like I like that idea. I thought that was kind of like sadistically awesome. Yeah, I, I agree with you. But yeah, I think I think the part when she says, "Oh, all I really wanted was a sister," it was like, wow. Uh, I took I took a lot of the air out of that badass. Yeah. Yeah. She was, like, threatening and menacing in the first one, and now she's like, oh, my God, she's a fucking whiner. Yeah, I, 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 I'll give you that, yeah. I, I, I kind of didn't mind it too much, because I kind of, um... I don't know. I, 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 liked, I liked what was happening there, so I... I but I, I totally get what you're saying, yeah. Yeah. The other thing... the, uh, the other My other uh, big problem with it is Yondu. Having just watched the first one... The context of Yandu as the surrogate father, they didn't earn it. Granted, when Yandu passed, I cried my fucking eyes out. I will, I will honestly <laughs> admit that. I did. That's probably my own dad issues, I'm sure. But whatever the case may be, I cried my eyes out. But I felt like, in, but in retrospect, I was like, but they, I don't feel like they earned that. In the entire first movie, Yandu's chasing him. Yandu's putting bounties on him. You know, Yondu's, you know, saying, they were going to eat you, boy! You know, and, and yeah, yeah, even this movie, like, oh, I was just, you know, teasing and stuff like that. But at at the end, when he saved Gamora, when Gamora's ship was blown up, when, you know, when Nebula blew her ship up and almost killed her sister, that the only thing she wanted, and they go into space and they get captured by the Ravagers, it's like, they're ready to space him. They're ready to throw him back out into space as as revenge until Peter convinces him, no, 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 we could do this job together. That's you put that in context, and and I and I understand what they were trying for because they because at one point even Yandu says, you know, you're like me, uh, Rocket. You know, you hide your emotions and so on and so forth. And you know, and it's like okay, fine, but I still don't feel like you've earned that title of you know my real dad. You yeah. know. I, I, you know, it's it's funny you say that because, a, I, you know, I usually I find in sequels when they pull like a bad guy or a peripheral asshole character into the fold only because he's popular, that usually bugs me. So I, 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 I know where you're going with both of those characters. Like I felt like okay, they they were prominent in the first one. Here we're gonna pull them in and maybe even pull make them part of the team or something or other because you know because they worked in the first. My radar goes on for that too. I didn't mind it here, and I'll tell you something else too. If you rewatch the first one again, because mm-hmm. I did, I did rewatch it because I was feeling the same thing. Like, did Yondu is does, does this gel or is this kind of retconning? But if you listen to everything he says in the first one, it does jive with what happens. He does talk about, you know, I was supposed to turn you over and I didn't, and yada 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 yada. I thought it worked out pretty well. But you're you are right. There was one scene where he he does look like he's going to kill him. But there were other scenes where everybody's saying to him, you're always so easy on him. Why are you always so nice to him? You always go easy on that guy. And he's like, shut up, mind your business. So yeah. I felt like I felt like it was there. And, and the fact that they took it to that step in this one and, and explained that as, as it was, I thought it worked. I thought it was okay. But And plus he's still a badass in his own right. So I, I could see him getting frustrated with this kid. And, you know, I've done a lot for you. And, you know, maybe it's time for me to really kick the crap out of you, whatever. Mm-hmm. And in the end, you know, he didn't. Um, I didn't mind that, but I, I know what you're saying, and I'll tell you something too. I mean, I saw it with Mary; she was a mess at the end. Like Aww. she was crying the whole time. I'm like, I'm like, which part are you crying about now? <laughs> but she was all busted up when he when he died, and the other things that happened. Oh my yeah. gosh, she was a mess. I, I totally get you. Yeah, when the when the Ravagers came back and gave him a Ravager funeral, I admit I was like, oh. All right, but those let, let, now that's my complaints. It's it's that's really the only two things that I had a problem with. Oh, I'm sorry. And Rocket. Rocket. Uh, I had one little problem with Rocket. Rocket and Peter's little, you know, dick measuring contest didn't feel right. I can't, I can't even, I cannot exemplify. I can't explain it. It's just, they're, they're, 
It just didn't feel right. Which part are you talking? Where, where, where they were, they're going against each other. Where they're like, you know, oh, I'm the better pilot, blah blah blah, and so on and so forth. And blah, blah, blah. it felt like an artificial conflict. You know? Yeah. To- I mean, if you think about it, there was an awful lot of, you know, the script. I think was trying very hard to get to know all of the characters, to get to know what makes them tick. So there, there was a lot of, you know, exploring why Yondu is the way he is and why Rocket is the way he is. And, you know, Groot kind of sits this one out more or less because he's just baby Groot and he's there to be funny and cute. Right. Um, you know, Gamora, what what makes her tag the sister, what makes her... I There was a lot of just exploring people's backgrounds and getting to know them, almost to the point where you, maybe it was too much. You know, maybe there was a little too much of, like, I mean... Yandu and, and Rocket kind of having, you know, you're just, you hide your feelings just like me. I almost feel like, would these characters be that capable of being that present, uh, uh, cognizant of their own behavior to be able to say things like that? The, you're just like me, you hide your emotions well and all this other stuff. You put on this big front just like I do. I don't know. I, I almost feel like that, that, that takes a lot of insight to be able to say these things. And, and with these guys... You know, would they have that kind of? Uh, I don't know. You know, some there might have been a little too much of that, possibly, but not in the not in the way that's going to detract me from enjoying the film. Showtime, a holes. Ah! Uh, that aside, I fucking loved it. I I enjoyed it. It, it was exciting. I felt it grew the characters. I felt fucking Kurt Russell as ego was brilliant fucking casting just seeing the two of them standing together i was like yep that's that's fucking kurt russell's son right there absolutely yeah. it's like no two ways about it like and just man you know what i don't remember kurt russell ever playing the part of like a bad guy he plays badasses and stuff like that but can you name like a movie where he was the bad guy hmm I, I don't know. I don't. Th- I well, I'll tell you what. I, I, well, again, I'll let you finish your thought. I, I can't think of one, but this was... There was something so... Oh, wait a minute. I, I'm, I'm, uh, 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 um, Death Proof. Death Proof, he was a bad guy. There you uh, go. Tarantino. Right. Okay. And he was, you know... I never realized just how creepy he can get. When he was talking... When he was deconstructing freaking Brandy to Peter... Yeah. I felt like such... Like a chill... And as he was as he was doing it, and I was like, "Holy fuck!" He gave, and that's when I knew he killed her. When that right when he was talking about Brandy, I knew right at that moment he fucking killed his mother. She yeah. didn't just get cancer; he gave her cancer. You know, it's funny to say that because I I had that same vibe. I didn't see it coming for a long time because I remember thinking I, I was I was sort of preparing myself for a kind of a conversation where it was. You know, if you're so powerful, why did you let my mother die? And him saying, like, look, I can't alter the course of whatever, or it changes everything, and, I, and, I, and that would be a mistake. And I, So I wasn't expecting the tumor in her head part. Um, yep. That surprised me a little bit. Although I know you're talking, like, like a little bit before that I saw it creeping in. Um, yeah, that was... See, I think what's brilliant about his character, and, and you know, and, Kurt, and even Kurt, like you said, in Death Proof, too, he doesn't get that he's the bad guy. It's almost mm. like his his character, like, you know, there's some villains in movies where they're just sort of twisting their mustache and it's like, ooh, I'm going to get you and stuff, you know. Um, but the really good villains don't know they're villains. They, they think they are there for a higher purpose and you just don't get it. You know, and I, and I think Kurt Russell nails that. Where it's, and I'll tell you yeah. something, too. One of the things I got from him... We talked before about how there's this kind of expanded Marvel, you know, comic universe where you had characters like the Beyonder, you know, mm-hmm. who who were, uh, you know, just all just completely omniscient and, and um, other characters too. That they, they they have this this gigantic um, frame of reference, for lack of a better way to say it, um, just humongous, larger than life, godlike characters. Right. I I thought as Russell was talking, he he kind of nailed that. I I I sort of got a sense of like the Beyonder, or you know one of those sort of characters. Like when they would speak, they, they had this kind of um, just they know everything, can see everything, and don't let the fact that I'm a human standing in front of you fool you. 
You know, I am a god. And I, and I got that from him. I thought that was sort of fascinating, frankly. Yep. Very much so. He, yeah. he, 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 he nailed... He nailed just about everything about that role. Like, it, it, like even the incredulous nature, like, why? Why aren't you going to help me with this? Okay, fuck it. Just just that reaction. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know, and like, I'll tell you really? too, I, <laughs> and I even, you know, I'll tell you too, I really loved how, and it was funny, I had sort of mixed feelings about it when I was watching it. The part when he kind of had him in like the big hall, the, and the, the, the big giant room where he had these sort of like egg-shaped, you know, flowery, things where he had the figures moving yeah 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 as he's explaining what had happened he's explaining his mother he showed him in this almost wax figurine kind of way which mm-hmm. i thought was sort of odd because i was thinking like you know if you can if you can make it so realistic why make it look plastic and waxy um but the way they did that had a really good comic vibe where you could, you know it's like it's like you know in comics like you know panels will show you what you need to see here right. it was kind of like the same way we're we're ex- explaining this in almost like comic panels where 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 you know I I thought that was really well done I thought that was pretty interesting um and I, and I, I tell you too we we just got not that long ago talked about the CGI in Rogue One holy shit did they nail the CGI of Kurt Russell Tell, tell me about it. I was like, "Oh, yeah, it's Snake Plissken. There he is!" Oh my god! I mean, it was crazy, and I and I was I was almost laughing where I said to myself, "You know what? If I was a god and I was inventing what I look like, that's the hair I would have too." <laughs> that's I would have Kurt I Russell's want. hair. <laughs> you wouldn't you wouldn't have gone for Hasselhoff? <laughs> no, I would have gone. I would have stuck with the Kurt Russell boy. Kurt Russell had the hair. <laughs> yeah, he, he still does. God bless him. All right. <laughs> It's like that. His uh, hair. He's got gray, but his hair still looks fucking badass. He's the last oh, mullet in the world. The Hell last yeah. mullet in the world, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um. I. 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 I, I thought they nailed him perfectly. Like, like the CGI for him was like really good. Yep. That that that, that whole that whole opening. That, I mean, they 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 managed to they managed to expand the universe. Uh, they managed to add this great character. I loved the character of Mantis. I mean, my God, every time frickin' Drax said something, you know, like, you know, relatively, like, not necessarily heartless, but like, no, you are ugly, and the way frickin' <laughs> Mantis would react is like, she broke my damn heart every fucking time. Oh, like, my God. Oh, oh, how, no. how funny was that? I mean, how, how, when, when the one part where he starts literally dry heaving and saying, because I, I'm picturing myself being with you, <laughs> <laughs> Like how funny was that? That was hysterical. I know. Oh god, but you needed that. You you kind of needed that bit of comic relief because if you think about it, it's a dark fucking story, man. Like total. I mean, I mean, seriously, how good is it? You know, it's hysterical because it's like, again, they nailed the characters. Like 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 Groot is such a good character. Again, he kind of mm-hmm. sits this one out, but I, you know, Drax, a, a character that you think is going to be just this kind of like. Oh, we we could use a a guy a muscle guy in this film, a strong strong man, whatever. But his character was so good. The way they write him, the way you know he he can't he can't do sarcasm. He, he takes everything literally, and and you're thinking that well that's got, that's going to be kind of short lived, but it's not. It's hysterical. I mean, he's a riot. If I touch someone, I can feel their feelings. You feel love. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I feel a general unselfish love for just about everybody. No. Sexual love. No, no, I don't. For her. No. <laughs> she just told everyone your deepest, darkest secret. Dude, <laughs> come on. I think you're overreacting a little bit. You must be so embarrassed. <laughs> do me, do me, do me. He, he's, he, he was the comic relief in this movie, and he needed to be. Because everything else was very, very dour. I mean, you had Gamora going through this thing with her sister. You got Peter finding and then basically having to kill his own fucking father. Mm-hmm. Groot is still growing up. Rocket is getting in touch with his, what his place is, yeah. both within the context of the team and everything like that. And you've got Yondu, who we, you come to find out he's basically a freaking outlaw ravager, if you could boo up, you know, go with that particular concept. I mean, holy shit. This is yeah. a fucking dark motherfucking place. I almost felt like as... Yandu kind of gets that stepfather comeuppance that stepfathers rarely get. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like, you're so obsessed with your father, and you, you stop noticing, oh, there's a guy here who's been kind of looking looking after you all this time, and you didn't notice. I, so I kind of like that he got his moment. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I totally hear what you're saying. And, and 
Yeah, I thought all all the characters are really, really like you really can't think of one character in this film that you say to yourself, "Well, that's that's the one I would have cut out." Because there's a, there is a lot of people. There's a lot of faces to follow in this in this movie. Yeah. So seriously. you say to yourself, "Well, who who would I get rid of if I had to scratch one?" I I'm hard pressed because I mean everybody is good. Everybody contributes. I I thought it was you know in that respect it's excellent. Oh God! I mean, I just I. The the movie was very an emotional roller coaster for me. I was very very I was very into it. I, I I did enjoy a lot of the parts of it. The effects were beautiful. The comedy always seemed to come at the right time and didn't overstay its welcome. The part the part when he says, "Of course I got issues," and he points, "That's my father." <laughs> oh, how great was I was cracking up laughing hysterical. <laughs> Oh God! Uh, I'm trying to think of anything specific more than I want to talk about with this flick. It's it's hard. I mean, we obviously agree about the flick. We 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 semi agree on some of the weaknesses. We 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 really enjoyed it. It's 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 a great extension. It's nice that in a weird way. Oh, oh a couple of things I do want to mention: the reveal of Stan Lee as a spy for the Watchers was <laughs> fucking awesome. Oh my God, was that crazy? I mean, again, I said I mean, like I said before, but like. Aspects of Marvel, like how would you, how would you ever get the Watchers into a Marvel movie? How would you ever do that? And there they were. I I had a coronary. I was like, you gotta be kidding. And I loved. <laughs> I mean, because because again, you've heard the fan theory that that that's what Stanley is. He's like one of the Watchers because he pops up everywhere. Gunn just takes that and runs with it and says, you know what? I love it. Let's do it. And he and there he is. <laughs> oh my god, that was fantastic. And I, and incidentally too, I love seeing Howard the Duck pop up again. Yep, I, that was a I nice surprise. Ask, I meant to ask you, I know he's a Marvel comic, but but does he live in the same universe as everybody else? I kind of thought he was... No, no his he's, own... he, he's the same universe. He's, yeah, he's okay. actually got his own comic back and everything like that now. No, definitely the same universe. Oh my but god. He, yeah, now, now I'm wondering, are we ever going to get a full-blown Howard the Duck movie again? Oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> that, I, would you be, know that would be I, funny. I, I, this, I wouldn't put it past anybody, because I... I cause, I think today, with this group making Marvel films, you could do that. You could do a Howard the Duck movie. Because, again, who, who would have thought Rocket Raccoon would have ended up on screen and it works? You know, I, I certainly didn't. When they first announced Guardians of the Galaxy, I felt like this was going to be the stumbling block in the Marvel Universe. And I was pleasantly surprised. This is when they were going to well jump the shark. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But here, I'm telling you, I, I, I'll bet you $1,000 if, if they just say... At this point, I mean, they it's this is like these guys just walking the tightrope and saying, "Oh yeah, you think that's good?" And they, they just do a backflip for no reason. It's like you didn't have to do that. You didn't have to do that. We just <laughs> wanted to see. I think they could do a Howard the Duck if they want to. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't know. There's 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 kind of, I don't know. There's that history. There's the, exactly, but that's you know, if, if anything, it's almost like that's a reason to do it. <laughs> you know. Uh, you know what? Who knows? Once Feige finishes, once he, once he finishes with like Aven- the the Avengers Infinity War, yeah, I don't I don't know what he's gonna do next. I mean, sure, I guess he could probably think of something, but as of right now, eh, I, I, maybe he might just say, "Fuck it, let's do that." Fuck it, let's do that. I tell you what, you know, it's funny because I I that's one of the things I ask myself a lot. I say, you know, they have this timeline, phase one, phase two, phase three. And you can see that they've planned it up until you know, you know Captain Marvel and and Infinity Wars two, which I'm not even sure if they're doing that two parter anymore or whatever. But I say to myself, if they're going this strong at the end, I don't see anybody pulling a banker and saying, you know what, we're done. I they're gonna mm-hmm. have to keep going and keep doing more. And the question is gonna be, well, what are they gonna do? And if they if they're already going as obscure as Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't know. I, I I'm wondering like, what do they do next? I, I I could I could see them just saying, well, what the hell else is there we can do, and start pulling out titles and just making them. I I honestly, if they can pull off a Howard the Duck movie, to me in the end that's it. That that's like the end. That's it's like that's it. There's nothing they can't do. If they can pull off Howard the Duck, <laughs> yeah. they can do anything. Which they, they can. Ab- can. <laughs> they, they can absolutely do a shot of Kevin Feige saying hi to the audience, walking into a room with a camera on a glass table. He can shit on that glass table and then go right into the Marvel animation, and everybody's gonna be like, "Oh, brilliant! That was oh my goodness, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful." 
I'm not going to start the petition for a Howard the Duck movie or anything. I'm just saying, like, I, I wouldn't even doubt it because, again, I don't know. Just just even the reaction that, that he got in the first one when you just saw him at the, in the end credit, the uh, you know, the after credit. I don't know. I would, I would not doubt it if you hear down the road, you know what? Fuck it. We're doing Howard the Duck. <laughs> um, I, you know, okay. Let, let's, let's, I mean, do we hope or do we like, do, what do we do? Do we bet? <laughs> no, I, 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 I don't know how I feel about it, to be perfectly <laughs> honest with you. A part of me is like, it, it, it's, it's, it's almost like, how do I say this? It's like when you're in, it, it's like when we were like going out in our twenties and stuff like that and drinking and stuff like that. You kind of have that. Oh yeah. Well, I dare you to do this. It's like, okay. There's a part of me that's like, <laughs> I want to dare Feige because I want to see if he can fucking do it. <laughs> Seriously. Right. Does anybody have any tape out there? I want to put some tape over the death button. Nobody has any tape. Not a single person has tape. You have an atomic bomb in your bag. If anybody's going to have tape, it's you. I have to do everything. You are wasting a lot of time. That's a really bad sign. And, and they still managed to put in a little Infinity War ending there as well. What's that? The... The, that priestess from the planet the, the, of, of all those gold people that were chasing the Guardians? Yes, yes. The giant cocoon thing that With she Adam. calls Adam. Well, That's yeah. Adam Warlock. Right, right, okay. All right, and uh, fans of the comic will know exactly who the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah. But Adam Warlock in the Infinity Gauntlet uh, series, which is where they've been heading since the first fucking Marvel movie back almost ten years ago now, he is a key figure in the resolution to to the Infinity Gauntlet saga. And in fact, it winds up being the one that wields the Infinity Gauntlet at the end of it. Oh, ah, okay. I think somebody counted. There's five credit after credit sequences in this one. Yeah, you've got the uh, the uh, the dude taking up Yondu's arrow. You've got um, Sylvester Stallone bringing the team together. Mm-hmm. You've got Teenager Group. Which was awesome. <laughs> Fucking Teenager Group was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> How great was that? Yeah. Uh, you've got the creation of Adam, and mm-hmm. you've got the Watchers walking away from Stan Lee. So, yeah, yeah. five endings. <laughs> I mean, I, and, and each one was, was just awesome. So, so yeah. here, here's a question. Do you think if, if Stallone was the only one in that group that I recognized, I wouldn't even have thought twice about it? But the fact that they actually brought in Ving Rhames for that one character, do you think that's going to be another spinoff? And they also brought in Michelle Yeoh. That was Michelle Yeoh, right. one of the yes. characters. Oh, and, and so, you know who was behind that little mask, too, by the way? Uh, who? That was Miley Cyrus. Oh, that's right! She voiced that one character! <laughs> yeah. I Again, I don't... I, like, why Why go to the trouble? I mean, again, why, why does Daniel Craig play a stormtrooper for five seconds? I don't know. But... Yeah, I mean, if you're going to go to the trouble to to actually cast for that little short scene, that makes you wonder: is that going to be something? He he has said that he would love to do offshoot adventures with just them. James Gunn has said that he would. Mm-hmm. So that's probably why he cast it that way because it was like, if you're going to cast some freaking people to to do those parts, that's a pretty fucking strong group as far as I'm concerned. Hell yeah! Oh you my know, god, I, right? I would see that movie. Hell, yeah, I would sure. I mean, get rid of Miley Cyrus, but all the other ones, great. Yeah, she's just a voice. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you scale of one to ten, what's your number, sir? Uh, I don't know. I feel like I gotta give. I between an eight and a nine, I, I want to give it like. There's a part of me that wants to just give it a full blown ten and just be like, what's again? I I can't find anything in this film that's lacking. I didn't find any one character I didn't like. There wasn't a, a moment that I didn't like. I heard some other reviewers talk about the gold people and how they didn't like them. I, didn't bother me. They, they, and every time they showed up, it was for a reason, and, and it didn't. They didn't. I thought it worked. The, the, part, when, the part when Rocket calls them all a bunch of arrogant douchebags. <laughs> <laughs> How funny was that? Well, because it's Rocket, and right. they were a bunch of arrogant douchebags. There so that go. worked. <laughs> I even liked their little like video arcade of people shooting things, and every time one of them died, like oh, oh, oh. oh that, and that was clever too. And you know, frankly, yeah. it, it's well, why don't we see more of that? We probably will in real life. So I mean, that that was pretty logical. I thought that was pretty good. I gave it an 8, an 8.5 to be exact. Uh, you know uh, what? I, I will go with that. That makes sense. Good. I, I, I did enjoy the movie. It's a fun movie, uh, and I'll probably get a chance to watch it again, I'm sure. But, you know, like I said, some of the key points that they relied on for part of the plot kind of just felt more convenience than rather earned. Um, but 
on top of that, but but you know, out of, out of that particular context, I thought all the actors just played it so damn well that it's like you can almost forget that you know the nebula, the nebula suddenly just wanting a sister thing, just seems very left field, or that you know, oh, in the end, Yondu was your dad the whole time, you know, just the actors made it work because when Yondu finally did pass, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. If you judge a movie by how well you go through the range of emotions watching it, then you have to call this a wild success. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I can't take it away from it. And, you know, Baby Groot was fucking awesome. I had a friend <laughs> of mine refers to Baby Groot in this movie like uh, the Scrat character from the Ice Age movies. Like, it's almost like when he's on the screen, he's the best part of the flick. Well, they even even those, in, I love moments. the I love the opening credits where they're battling the monster in the background, and he's just come a little it, bit closer. <laughs> right? It's just him dancing around in the foreground. I mean, how great was that? And you and it was, it was funny because I I felt like you know normally I would have been like, oh come on, move move the comedy out of the way. I want to see what's going on. No, he was it, the whole thing. It was just they just nailed that perfectly. Yep. If, if the entire fight had been him just dancing around to the music and then the fight was over. I would have been like, ah, eh, they didn't have to go there. I'm, I'm glad that there was like, okay, now it's destroyed. Now let's focus on this and how the hell do they defeat this thing? Yeah, because that would have felt cheap, cheap to me that they're battling this thing and having a problem. And it's like, okay, there you go, they've earned it. Thank you, I'm good. <laughs> I mean, I love, I, I love the part where Gamora starts yelling at him, Groot, get out of the way, you're gonna get hurt." He just waves, he, and she's like, "Hi, <laughs> like, hi." <laughs> oh my god, that was awesome. Oh, teenage Groot. Oh god. Uh, I hope I hope we don't have to deal with teenage group too long. Ugh, dude, seriously, you gotta clean up your room. It's a complete mess. I am Guru. I am not boring. You're boring. You know what's boring? Sitting there playing that mind-numbing game. What's boring is me tripping over your vines every day. I'm not boring. Guru. <laughs> And now I know how Yondu felt. <laughs> that was, what a great... It was so funny. Oh, my God. You're molting all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> you just sit here playing that stupid game all day. By the yeah. way, to, 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 to dear Brian Singer, that's how you demonstrate the father becoming the son and the son becoming the father. That's how you demonstrate that. <laughs> exactly. Not, not that really bad whatever the fuck thing that that poor Brandon Roth had to read Oof. in Superman Returns. Oh, uh, yeah. Not getting it, guys. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's not, we've yeah. made it. We've made it without bashing. Let's, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> let's just, let's just end on a high note. 8.5 and a, and a nine. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say that you say nine. Yeah, I, I will say a nine. Yeah, I'll go with that. Okay. Coolness. Excellent. Love it. Excellent. Yes, yes, the summer of movies has officially begun. What are we going to review next? We're not even sure. <laughs> All I know is, is that if there's a Marvel or a DC movie, my son's going to want to see it, so I'm guaranteeing to go to see it. So probably the next thing is going to be Wonder Woman. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, then we got Wonder Woman. So yeah, it's, it's going to be the summer's the summer is officially underway with our summer movie. So, and uh, next week we'll be back to talk again. We're going to get back to our Die Hard series next week, and we'll talk about Die Hard Three: Die Hard with a Vengeance fucking awesome talking with you about this sir and i look forward to see where this galaxy is going to go next i do too all right my brother i will see you uh back here next week same time same channel sir thanks for listening to the reviews without remorse podcast with joe and dave join us here every thursday for a new episode and be sure to check out the reviews without remorse channel on youtube and vidme for spoiler free reviews of new releases as well as in-depth discussions of current and classic cinema If you enjoy this podcast, please consider becoming a patron. You can find our page at patreon.com. As little as $1 a month goes a long way. All clips in this podcast are used for commentary and critique, and is considered fair use. No copyright infringement is intended.